James Epistle to the Twelve Tribes Chapter 1 My Brethren James 1 verse 1 James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, James, this was the Lord's half-brother, who did not believe that Jesus was the Christ until after his half-brother's resurrection. He did believe soon afterwards, because we see him in the upper room with his mother and brothers. Acts 1 verse 14 These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Paul later says that Jesus appeared privately to James in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 7 After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. This is a possible reason why James ends up being an elder in the church in Jerusalem. James was called to stay put in Jerusalem. What reason would Jesus have for speaking to his half-brother in private? and not his other brothers. I believe it was to tell him of his future role as the leader of the church in Jerusalem, and his need to write the book that goes by his name to the twelve tribes that would soon be scattered abroad. It is highly likely that this epistle is written prior to Saul of Tarsus getting saved on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Notice the position of authority he has according to Peter. Acts 12 verse 17, But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go shew these things unto James, and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. It is James, and Peter, who instruct the believers in the Jerusalem church about Paul and Barnabas ministering to the Gentiles in Acts 15 verses 13 to 21. It is also in this conclusion of James that we see that the kingdom saints in Jerusalem recognized that the Gentiles did not have to be under the law of Moses as they were. Acts 21 verses 17 to 24, And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord, and said unto him, Thou sayest, Brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law, and they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. What is it therefore? The multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do therefore this that we say to thee, We have four men which have a vow on them, them take, and purify thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things, whereof they were informed concerning thee, are nothing, but that thou thyself also walkest orderly, and keepest the law. Paul also mentions visiting with James when he went to Jerusalem initially in the book of Galatians. Galatians 1 verses 18 to 19, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. This previous meeting with James and Paul probably played a role in their second meeting that occurred in Acts 15 when the Jerusalem council took place. Galatians chapter 2 speaks about the council meeting and its conclusions in greater detail as well. A servant, the little flock in Jesus' day, and in the time of Jacob's trouble, are called servants. Revelation 1 verse 3 To the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, the book is written to the twelve tribes of Israel, just like the book of Hebrews was written to the Hebrews. They are mentioned here as being scattered abroad. When was there a scattering in James' day? Upon the persecution that arose concerning Stephen. Acts 11 verse 19 Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis, and Cyprus, and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Why to the Jews only? First of all, when the Jews were scattered in Acts 8, the apostles had no idea about the changes that were about to take place. They definitely did not expect that the chief of sinners, Saul of Tarsus would get saved, and that God would make him the apostle of the Gentiles. They were still going to the same people God had originally called them to go and reach, because Israel was to rise before they would take the word to the Gentiles. Isaiah 60 verse 3, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings, to the brightness of thy rising. God had promised to scatter the Jews whenever they were disobedient to his law. Deuteronomy 32 verse 26 I said, I would scatter them into corners, I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. My brethren, James 1 verses 2 to 3, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. My brethren, James and the apostles all agreed in Galatians to limit their ministry to the circumcision, the Jews, 
and that Paul would go to the heathen in all nations. Galatians 2 verse 9 And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations. James tells them that many temptations will try to trip them up, because the devil wants to destroy their testimony. They should rejoice however, because God was turning that negative into a positive to strengthen their faith by teaching them patience. The tribulation saints will have many temptations, like taking the mark of the beast, that they must endure, and this epistle, as well as all the Hebrew epistles were written to strengthen those tribulation saints. The trying of your faith worketh patience, Trials strengthen your faith. The greatest trial that will ever come upon Israel will be the time of Jacob's trouble. That tribulation period is spoken about in Jeremiah 30 verse 7 and the book of the Revelation. James 1 verse 4, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience have her perfect work. If a person over time has learned to be patient through their temptings they will be made perfect slash complete, mature. They are not made sinless, but perfect. The word perfect means a finished or completed project. God knows what they, and we need, i.e., patience, and he teaches both us and them patience while we endure the temptations before us. The enduring is easier to endure if we can realize that God is strengthening us to handle other things in the future that Satan will throw our way and that should produce joy. James 1 verse 5 If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. Proverbs 2 and Matthew 7 verse 7. James 1 verses 6 to 8. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James teaches these kingdom believers that the way to receive wisdom is to ask God for it. This book is not written to us today. It was written to the remnant of kingdom believers in the first century. James was writing this epistle soon after the scattering of the Jerusalem saints, so his Jewish brothers and sisters could know how to live in such a perilous time. They would be tempted by their countrymen to return to the old system of sacrifices at the temple, which would mean that they would be denying that Christ was the fulfillment of them. They needed patience and wisdom, and God wanted to give it to them. This book is also a message on how to survive a future scattering of the nation of Israel when they are fleeing the Antichrist in the tribulation period. It is not an epistle to the church today. It is a Hebrew epistle. We can glean from it and make practical applications from it, but the doctrine in it disagrees with the clear teachings of the apostle of the Gentiles. It is for Israel under a different dispensation. We are the church, which is Christ's body, under the mystery program which was kept a secret since before the world began. Romans 16 verse 25 and Ephesians 3. James 1 verses 9 to 11. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich, in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, he is exalted to the same level as everyone else. When kingdom saints sold all that, they had to follow Christ, distribution was made to the low and poor. The rich, in that he is made low, the rich believer is to rejoice in that he is made low, humbled to the same level as everyone should be. Remember that in the kingdom program that these Jews were under in the early Acts period where they had to sell all that they had, and distribution was made by the apostles so that all were equal. This exalted the person who had little and humbled the person who had much and both of them needed advice on how to deal with that kingdom program of equality. Notice that it is the rich person that is made low that gets the extra instruction that everything is going to perish. James 1 verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, what is the result of not enduring the temptation to return to Judaism, or not enduring the temptation of taking the mark of the beast in the tribulation period for these Jews? Damnation. Matthew 10 verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Matthew 24 verse 13 But, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mark 13 verse 13, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. All three of these verses refer to Israel going through the tribulation period, not us living out our daily lives in the dispensation of grace today. He shall receive the crown of life, 
Those that endure temptation are given entrance into the long-awaited kingdom of heaven that shall dwell on earth immediately after the time of Jacob's trouble. Revelation 2 verse 10, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Luke 22 verses 28 to 30. James 1 verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Abraham was tempted by God, not to sin, but to trust God by faith in his word. The trail of temptation James 1 verses 14 to 15, But every man is tempted, when he is drawn away of his own lust, and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Drawn away of his own lust, and enticed, God is absolute holiness, and in him is no sin. He does not use sin to test believers in any age. You are tempted by the very fact that you are born a sinner. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. What was it that Adam lusted for? We know what Eve lusted for, because scriptures plainly tell us, but what about Adam, who was there with her? Genesis 3 verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Eve ate the fruit first, and then she gave it to Adam, who knew better, but he became desirous of the knowledge that Eve now had. Adam wanted to become as gods, knowing good and evil, after Eve had done so, and he lusted after that knowledge. And when his lust conceived it produced his sin, then Adam received the wages of his sin that God had warned him about, which was death, and that has passed down to all of us. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6 verse 23 says. We inherited our sin nature from Adam and Eve, and we naturally give in to our sinful flesh. God did not give mankind his sinful flesh, he chose to sin. Adam didn't have the same lust that we have today at the time when he chose to listen to Satan instead of God. James 1 verses 16 to 17 do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. The Father of lights, this means that he is not just the originator and giver of every good gift, but he also created light. Let there be light Adam is called the Son of God, because God created him. Angels are called the sons of God, because God created them also, which makes God their father through creation, not through birth as some wrongly teach. God is the creator of all the lights no matter where they are, and he himself is the light where there is absolutely no shadow regardless of where God is. God does not cast a shadow, only light. Of his own will begot he us. James 1 verse 18, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Of his own will begot he us. It was God's will that those who believed the gospel of the kingdom would be begotten of God, become his children. This was the same thing that Jesus spoke about to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. John 3 verses 3 to 8 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb, and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. With the word of truth, the word of truth that begot a Jew into becoming one of God's children was that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16 verses 16 to 18. That we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. James tells the kingdom saints of the first century that they are a kind of first fruits of his creatures. That also means that there are many more fruits to follow, which is a reference to all those Jews that will be one to Christ through the kingdom gospel in the tribulation period. Matthew 24 verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. James 1 verses 19 to 20 Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. My beloved brethren, Twice this title is used in two verses that are separated by only one other verse to let you know that James is talking to his beloved brethren, the Jews, 
and that he wants them to remember that they are beloved. James 1 verse 21 Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Because God begot them by the word of truth, they should lay apart all filthiness because it is not a family trait that they inherited from their heavenly Father who begot them, so they should emulate their new father, and not their old father the devil. Lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, unnecessary actions, wasteful, sinful. Receive with meekness the engrafted word. The word of God is not just some random bits of information to store in their memories, but it engrafts itself to their soul, and it will save them if they humble themselves. James 1 verses 22 to 24, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. James is just now introducing something here that was always known by the Jews and the Jews' religion, and that is the place of works in their faith. We know what Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 says to us today in the church age, but the Jews and the Jews' religion, Judaism, had a requirement that works, things that you do, accompanied their faith. They were outward manifestations of the inner faith that they had. If a person in the Old Testament believed God's word, then they would act on his word by offering the necessary sacrifices because by faith he believed he would receive the covering of his sins if he acted on his faith. Chapter 2 deals with this in much greater detail and has caused confusion to untold millions because they have never learned how to rightly divide the word of truth. The Hebrew epistles were not written to the church, which is Christ's body, they were written to the kingdom saints of the first century and those in the tribulation period. Until you understand, this you will continue to be tossed to and fro about what to believe today and will continually blend law and grace. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Jesus gave Israel's leaders a perfect parable that described them to a T as being hearers of the word and not doers. It also perfectly described the reaction of the publicans and harlots, which heard his word and obeyed it. Matthew 21 verses 23 to 32, And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing which if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence, was it, from heaven, or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say, from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say, of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus, and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first, and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented, and went. And he came to the second, and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father? They say unto him, The first. Jesus saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, that ye might believe him. James 1 verse 25, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. The perfect law of liberty, the publicans and harlots looked into it in Jesus' day, and many of them continued therein, while the chief priests and elders did not look into Jesus' words, nor were they doers of his word. They didn't sell all that they had to come and follow him as the common people did, looking for the coming kingdom he was preaching. James is warning his hearers not to be like the chief priests and elders who looked good on the outside, but to be like the publicans and harlots who heard the word and grafted in them and were begotten of God. The Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5-7 was a great example of the perfect law of liberty. Israel will be blessed by being allowed entrance into their kingdom. They will also be blessed in that kingdom for doing, and not just hearing the word of God. James 2 verse 12, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. James 1 verse 26, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. If any man among you seem to be religious, the chief priests and elders seemed to be religious at first sight, but when you listened to them and watched them, their religion was empty, because they rejected the truth, 
for their own tradition, what is religion? It is mentioned only five times in the Bible, and it is simply a system of beliefs that a person maintains. But God established only one religion, Judaism, and Satan has duplicated that with thousands of variations adding to it or taking away from it. Replacement theology stems from not rightly dividing the word of truth and claiming Israel's promises and doctrines as our own. You and I are not Israel, and we were never under the law. We are under grace today. The Jewish religion changed as promised in the scriptures with its Christ coming and fulfilling its promises, and a Jewish believer that believed in their Messiah would be considered a completed Jew. James was simply continuing on the religion started by God with the Jewish people. We are not in a religion today in the dispensation of grace as the Jews were and will be again in the tribulation period. We have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ today and are a part of an unprophesied time period not mentioned in the Bible until after Paul was saved. Romans 16 verse 25 and Ephesians 3. James 1 verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion, these are instructions for the kingdom saints in the first century, and for the tribulation saints. To be a fatherless child, and a widow during the tribulation period will be awful, and God calls upon the saints that have the means to assist others less fortunate. Chapter 2. Can Faith Save Him? James 2 verses 1 to 4, My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool, are ye not then partial in yourselves? and are become judges of evil thoughts? My brethren, chapter 2 begins much the same way as chapter 1 minus what is needed for the cover of any letter. The name of the author of the letter James, and the names of the intended recipients of the letter, the twelve tribes scattered abroad. James is writing to his brethren, Israel, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Notice this is not faith in the Lord, but the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is speaking about the hearers having Christ's faith. The faith of Jesus Christ did not have respect to rich at the expense of the poor. The Lord of glory, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Respect of persons, why would you prefer a rich man over a poor man in your assembly? Inside your heart, which is desperately wicked, you want what the rich can offer you. It's natural, but we are called to die to our flesh, sin nature, and see all people alike as equal in God's eyes. The rich man has many friends, but he never knows which ones are real until he is broke, while the poor man who has few friends has true friends. James 2 verse 5 Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? My beloved brethren, James, just like Peter and John, all quote the Lord in his earthly ministry as a basis for their doctrine to the circumcision believers scattered abroad after the persecution of Stephen. Notice that there is no promise of a heavenly destiny to their hearers, only an entrance into an earthly kingdom. Heirs of the kingdom, Israel was never promised a home in heavenly places in the Old Testament, the Gospels, or in any of the nine Hebrew epistles that end the Bible, Hebrews through Revelation. They all speak about an earthly destiny for Israel. It is Paul's writings, and his writings alone, that promise a home in heaven for all who believe in this dispensation of grace. Matthew 5 verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Luke 6 verse 20, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples, and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, which he hath promised to them that love him. Exodus 20 verse 6, And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Deuteronomy 5 verse 10, And shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Proverbs 8 verse 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. John 14 verses 15 to 28, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, yet a little, while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, 
and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. John 16 verse 27, For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. James 2 verses 6 to 7, But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called? Remember the words of Christ when he said, It is harder for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. This is not heaven we are talking about, but Israel's kingdom. Jesus told the rich young ruler to sell all that he had and come follow him, but he left because he had much riches. He couldn't depart from the things of this world to gain entrance into Israel's promised kingdom. We are not told to sell all that we have today in the dispensation of grace because we have a heavenly destiny, but that doesn't mean we should hoard things and not be a blessing to others with the things the Lord has allowed us to acquire. We should bless others and our local churches. Ye have despised the poor. Judas Iscariot once made a telling statement concerning the poor, which Jesus immediately corrected, because he knew Judas' heart. John 12 verses 5 to 6, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence, and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Judas will not see the kingdom of heaven come down to the earth, nor inherit the promises, because he did not care for the poor, but was a lying thief. James 2 verses 8 to 9, If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Leviticus 19 verse 18, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. The royal law, it is called the royal law, because royalty gave it to a royal priesthood, and he lived it perfectly for three and a half years. Once again, we see how serious God is against those who show favoritism to the rich and the powerful. 1 Peter 2 verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. James 2 verses 10 to 11, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, Do not commit adultery, said also, Do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Exodus 20 verses 13 to 14, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. James 2 verse 12, So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. The law of liberty, during the tribulation period, it is imperative that believers act like Christ to their fellow believers as they will not be able to buy or sell unless they have the mark of the beast. James 1 verse 25. James 2 verse 13. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath shewed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Matthew 7 verses 1 to 2. Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. James 2 verses 14 to 17, What doth it profit? My brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Notice that James contradicts Paul and Romans here, but there really is no contradiction if you will just rightly divide your Bible. The Hebrew epistles are written to the Hebrews that were still under the kingdom program in the first century. They are also written for them in the tribulation period after the dispensation of grace ends at the rapture of Christ's body, the church. James 2 verse 18, Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works, shew me thy faith without thy works, 
and I will shew thee my faith by my works. Matthew 7 verses 24 to 27. Just as we today have to continually teach and remind people that we are under grace today and not the law, so too will these tribulation saints have to remind others that they are not a part of the body of Christ because they will have already been raptured. The tribulation saints are back under the law, just like they were before the body of Christ started back in Paul's day. They will show their faith by their works during the tribulation period. James 2 verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Malachi 2 verse 10, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother? By profaning the covenant of our fathers. The devils also believe and tremble. Mark 1 verse 24. Mark 1 verse 24, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. James 2 verses 20 to 22, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Sayest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Faith without works is dead. Works do not make faith perfect today in the dispensation of grace. Ephesians teaches us that salvation is not of works, while Romans 11 verse 6 tells us, it is no more of works. Both of these are epistles for the dispensation of grace, and not for the tribulation period while Hebrews through Revelation are all tribulation epistles, and things are different in those times. They will be the same way they were in the first century, while the kingdom program was still in operation amongst the Jewish remnant. James 2 verse 23, And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Genesis 15 verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Romans 4 verse 3, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Galatians 3 verse 6, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. He was called the friend of God. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 7, Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? Isaiah 41 verse 8, But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham my friend. James 2 verses 24 to 26, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Joshua 6 verses 17 to 25, And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver, and gold, and vessels of brass and iron, are consecrated unto the Lord, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, and ox, and sheep, and ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only the silver, and the gold, and the vessels of brass and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers, which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Hebrews 11 verse 31, By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, when she had received the spies with peace. Was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? They mean what they say to the people they are written to. They are written to those under the law of Moses who are still in Israel's kingdom program back in the first century and to those going through the tribulation period. If you compare James with Romans when they both talk about when Abraham is justified and when they both chose two different stories that happen at very different times to prove their point. Both are correct, but both are different, because Abraham was before the law, 
and he is the father of the Jewish nation that was later under the law. He is also the father of all of them that believe, but in a different way than he was to Israel. Compare what Paul and James says about Abraham and justification in Romans 4. They are not saying the same things, because they are both speaking to two different groups in two different dispensations. Chapter 3. The Tongue James 3 verse 1, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Matthew 6 verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. James 3 verse 2, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Offend not in word, this is what someone does with their tongue. See both the books of Psalms and Proverbs for much teaching concerning the tongue. James 3 verse 3, Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Psalm 32 verse 9, Be ye not as the horse, or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. James 3 verses 4 to 8, Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Proverbs 16 verse 27 An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. Psalm 140 verse 3 They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, adder's poison is under their lips. Selah. James 3 verse 9 Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Genesis 1 verses 26 to 27 And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. James 3 verses 10 to 13 Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. James 2 verse 18 Yeah, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I will shew thee my faith by my works. James 3 verses 14 to 17, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion, and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Proverbs 2 verse 6, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. James 3 verse 18, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Psalm 85 verses 10 to 13, Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yeah, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and shall set us in the way of his steps.